Okay, good morning and hello traders. Today is Thursday, June 1st. Michael Boutros here for this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Welcome to June Trade, my friends. Uh, start of a new month, new opportunities. We did just get the uh, release of ADP employment, which blew out at 253,000 versus the expected 180,000. Initial jobs claims also coming out slightly higher than expected, 248,000 versus 238,000. So a bit mixed picture there. Obviously, everyone to always takes the ADP as sort of a gauge for what we should expect for uh, non-farm payrolls. So with non-farm payrolls on tap tomorrow, uh, current expectation for that release uh, looks for a print of about 180,000 still. Uh, I thought it would be upward revised by now, but it's 180,000. Remember last month we got 211,000. We'll be paying close attention, obviously, to the labor force participation rate, uh, which did uh, uptick to 62.9% uh, last month. Obviously, a big caveat, if you see the labor force participation rate dwindle, that'll tend to put artificial downward pressure. Unemployment is expected to hold at 4.4%, so we're going to want to take a look at that as well. Major event risk on tap for the U.S. dollar tomorrow heading into the start of June trade. A very precarious position. So uh, still, still a time where you want to keep your uh, leverage a little bit tighter, trade size a little smaller as we get into the close of this week. And then as we open next week, that's when we start to take a deep breath and delve in a little deeper. Okay, we get a little bit more uh, conviction on the opening ranges. Keep in mind, some of these trades are at some key levels that we'll go over today as well. So uh, let's jump right into the charts. On the menu for today, we have the DXY uh, from last night, the, D, uh, the dollar yen, Aussie dollar, Euro CAD and Euro Oz, uh, Euro Oz breaking daily resistance. Uh, we'll see how far that breach goes. Uh, we'll touch base on Euro dollar, Sterling Oz, and Kiwi Yen, which continues to hold a really, really clean range. Uh, Kiwi dollar, Aussie Kiwi we'll give an update on, and then we'll jump into the commodities, gold, silver, and crude. If there's anything I missed or if there's any trade setups you guys want to review, as always, feel free to throw them on the message board. i got to go through this at a pretty relatively uh, brisk pace today, guys, so uh, bear with me. All right. Let's jump right in. Dollar index, here's what we're looking at. We're getting a nice bump here today. Um, the levels remain unchanged. Again, heading into the monthly open, you're likely to see this thing chop sideways a little bit. Remember the key ranges that we're talking about. Um, Karthik, I did promise you Brent. We will take a look at Brent crude from scratch. Okay, we'll put that together from scratch for you. Um, so let me leave room for that. Okay, so for the dollar index, you know, the, the weekly range is still sort of in play. The levels that you want to keep in mind, guys, are still unchanged. I'm, I'm going to keep saying the same levels for you every day, but 97, uh, 67 to 97, 87, critical resistance. Again, key confluence of parallels and Fibonacci levels, also defined by the weekly and monthly, um, well, I guess not yet, but the weekly opening range highs. Um, and then you have key support down to 96.47, maybe a little lower, 96.30. You got the lower parallel there extending off the lows from February, as well as the key 618 retracement of the entire advance off that 2015 low. So certainly the levels remain um, very clear. It's just you've got to clear this range right here. So it's still rather be selling rallies uh, in the dollar index. So as we started off the week, if you guys remember, um, again, just to go back real quick, as we started off the week with the DXY, we were talking about uh, that major resistance being sort of the key threshold right here, 96, uh, 97, 67, 97, 87. So we came into that region to start off the week. Here's what we looked like. We came right into that region, rejected it, and then pulled off, and we held last week's low. So we're still within last week's range. Look for that break, bearish invalidation still 97.87. All right, any questions on the dollar index before we get into some of the crosses here? Okay, that's number one. Number two, dollar yen. So Jamie put out a piece on this uh, or a trade on this, missed it by three pips on the entry. He would have already been out at profit here at the target. Really, really nice um, position on dollar yen, but didn't quite get uh, didn't quite get the entry. So look, dollar yen, here's what it looked like last night. We were warning of a near-term bounce here. I was telling you um, we could get a bump here, but bullish uh, 
divergence was really the tell, okay? I'll show you in the near-term chart in just a moment. But even on the daily chart, you are getting some divergence into the low here. You see how momentum holds that low? Price action made a slightly lower low. And again, we're always looking at the close when we're trying to ascertain divergence, right? Nothing matters as far as the wick. So price action did make a lower low. The oscillator made a equal low, okay? Or even a higher low is even better. That's true divergence. And why this subtle, subtle divergence is important, and you hear me say this sometimes in the webinar, guys, but it's important to drill home. The closer the divergent signals are to 50, those are typically your strongest signals. When you see divergence above 70 or divergence below 30, those don't tend to be very strong signals. The closer the reference points are to 50, actually those tend to be pretty strong. So you got that on the daily chart. On the intraday chart, you got a similar type of divergence here as price action pressed a new low, the oscillator continued to hold or make a higher low, and it was suggested that you could see a bounce. I'm still looking lower below this. If we breach higher, that would suggest that the dollar yen is on you know, a little bit more of a, of a reversal type of play. As long as this holds as resistance into the US Open today, I'm not really interested in any further dollar yen long exposure per se from here. Um, this is the weekly opening range highs at this point. You have slope resistance, right? We did break this, but it's a three point touch, four point touch, break saw acceleration, downside break saw acceleration, resistance again, that level converges right on basic trend line resistance off of the monthly highs from May. And a very decent pivot in price. See that gray line there? Resistance, break, acceleration, support, support, pivot, pivot, and here we are all converging around 1145, stretch that until 1160. Okay, so this is sort of the near-term breakout level for dollar yen. If we're able to break through this, look for the pullback into here as support, and that would be sort of your launching zone where you'd expect to see a little bit bigger of a dollar yen breakout. But on the daily chart, just to highlight where we've come from, you know, again, the risk in my mind is still for, um, you know, an exhaustion blow off to the high and then pull back again. But immediately, obviously, you got that divergence on the near term. You got the divergence on the daily. Look for resistance up near that 1145, 1150 level for dollar yen. On a downside break, by the way, if we do get a hold here and we and it does start to move to the downside, if we clear 110.51, the level of interest uh, that we highlighted in last night's piece is 110 is the actual 200-day moving average. And then just below that, you have a 764 retracement, which converges on some near-term slope, uh, and that's at 109.46. So the levels are pretty clear. Weekly opening range is well-defined. And um, dollar yen is heading into near-term resistance here as we open up the U.S. trade session. Non-farm payrolls are on tap tomorrow, typically a big reactor to U.S. data. So with that on tap and the start of a fresh month, look for some serious volatility in dollar yen heading into tomorrow's NFP report. Any questions on dollar yen or where we stand on this one at this point? Okay, Karthik, are you talking about dollar yen? He says, a good trade. I sweeped in good pips on this. Amen. Uh, Sandy saying it was a good trade. Uh, great. I'm glad some of you took it. Karthik says, yeah, on dollar yen. Awesome. Hey, D, uh, no worries. Great to see you in the room. Um, it was a great trade. Loved it. Uh, but at this point, long exposure, I would you know put at risk below that 111.45, one, uh, 111.60 level. And um, we'll see how the U.S. session looks. If we get some exhaustion up here, it might be a decent pullback play, but... Long story short, if this plows through, I think dollar yen, um, you know, that would invalidate our near-term bearish bias that we started the week off. Okay, near-term support on the pullback. Look at this zone right here first. Okay, weekly open and now the monthly open as well. Uh, excuse me, the monthly open comes down here at 110.75, but this is the weekly open and monthly open from last month. So a decent little pivot in price around 111.20. Uh, but really, it's 110.50. That's that key support, the 618. 
and the weekly opening range low. Okay, exhausted on dollar yen. Number three, uh, Aussie dollar. Another one that was pretty clean this week. You know, we, we, we talked about how it was a little indecisive for us to start the week, uh, kind of wanting to validate whether we were going to see a break, whether this was a true break of this median line formation. You know, we might be off on the slope here, guys, because it's starting to lose fruitfulness. But at the end of the day, the near-term picture, in my mind, still looks relatively clean. Uh, the lateral levels have been outstanding, um, and we're now heading into near-term support um, just uh, above that 73, 74, 73, 73 level. I'll show you that in a moment on the near-term charts, but here's what the daily chart looks like, okay? We talked about the outside day. Um, well, it wasn't a true outside day, but that reversal that we made last week. Here's this week, again, trying to make the break to the upside, and failure, um, brings us into the 618 retracement yet again of the advance off last year's low. So the daily chart doesn't really have much to look at. It's really here where the clarity comes in. And I think we talked about this yesterday in the webinar. Um, as this thing was again failing at resistance, you saw the move lower. So a very clean Monday to Wednesday opening range stretch. Okay, or Monday, Tuesday opening range stretch. There's the opening range break for the week. Shifts the focus down, 74 was the first target, 73, 74, 73, 73 was our second target. The low so far, guys, is 73, 78. Um, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> want to uh, be stubborn and press it into 73, 73 for holding exposure, but that's the big level. 764 retracement, eh, it's just a retracement, but also the 100% extension. So if this is just correctionary, two equal legs down off the high puts you right there at 73, 73 coincides perfectly with slope support. That's just a median line or a parallel drawn off of slope resistance here. You could see touch points one, two, and it looks like we're following that same gradient, comes in just ahead of that 73, 73 level. Watch for near-term support here as we head into the US Open. Pretty clean trade, guys. I mean, Aussie, if we take this to a 240-minute chart just to show you, largely speaking, until we did this you know, BS here, um, has been pretty darn clean. Look at that formation. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, you don't get stuff like that too often, right? Even on the ascent here from the rebound off the 100% extension that we made off of the highs. Perfect touch, perfect rebound. Got a little messy on the upside, but here's the pullback. This is the first area of serious interest for support as far as Aussie is concerned, which is why I'm not really a big fan of Aussie short exposure from here. Um, although I do, I, I must say that if the dollar continues to, to rally and we do break, your next downside, downside target is like 50 pips or 40 pips down into uh, the lows again. So there is room, but near term, certainly you're coming in some support area of interest for Aussie dollar in your 73.74. No, D, I didn't. Euro is still coming up. Sandy, could you have a look at pound yen? Uh, if we have time, pound yen. Sure. See if I can get these as, uh, through as fast as possible. Any questions on Aussie dollar? Still a beautiful trade. No, no change to any of the levels uh, from yesterday. Uh, we're now so we've taken out that first target. We're now just above this target. You're gonna go ahead and lower your bearish invalidation level at this point to the median line confluence here. Uh, that takes you just above the weekly open. So 74.35 into 74.40 is what I would designate as near-term bearish invalidation. That's the break we would need to see to validate a little bit more of a conviction breakout for Aussie dollar. That being said, you are at support heading into the US Open. Okay, that's Aussie dollar number three. Number four is Euro CAD. Uh, I just wanted to give you an update on this. Also a trade that we've been following. Look, we, you know, before everyone gets all excited about the long side and, you know, I understand where the excitement can come from. <laughs> uh, 52.20, we've been talking about that level. You can't get excited on the long side until we clear it, period, end of conversation, exclamation point. It's such a huge region, not only because it's the 618 retracement, but you have some swing highs um, that obviously converge on that region, some decent pivots in price on a closed basis, if you look right there. Uh, also, on a broader scale, on a grand scale, I think Jamie showed you guys this yesterday. We were talking about it, um, me and him. This uh, pitchfork formation that originates off the 2012 lows, 
Okay, modified pitchfork. You can see that the median line has offered some very nice pivots in price. That is right up there too. You got the 618 retracement. You got basic slope support for the advance off this year's low. So if you take this pitchfork, take a parallel off the lows right here from October of last year, that caught the highs. There's a lot here. So um, a look at the near-term chart, which is what we went into study on yesterday, highlighted uh, the fact that EuroCAD was coming into basic trend line resistance extending off last week's high. There it is. Two touch, three touch confirms the trend line. So right off the bat, we were trading at 5160 yesterday. Right off the bat, you know, I noted that look, momentum's at resistance, price is at resistance, you're likely to see a pullback yesterday. As we were in the webinar yesterday, if you guys remember, the opening range for the week was breaking to the upside and it did shift the focus higher. But again, we talked about 52.20 and how critical that level is. So again, I'm gonna say that the immediate upside bias is at risk here. You're at risk for a pullback. Levels remain unchanged. Look for initial support at 51. Okay, backed by that 2016 open, 50.20, that major level that we talked about last week. Um, and look for a break of this near-term consolidation. Here's what the 120 minute looked like last night. Okay, and this is what you don't want to see. Momentum breaking to overbought scenario and then price still unable to break major key resistance or even near-term resistance. On these fuels, on this break where the market breaks into overbought, if you're at resistance, that's the time of which you want to see price start to breach because it means the market's flooding in. There's a whole lot of influx. There's push and you're at resistance and you see that pop. If that doesn't happen and the market's flooding into a trade and it's holding resistance, well, that's your tip. That's your tell. Something's not right. So I am looking for the pullback immediately. The risk remains 5220 is going to remain your near-term bearish invalidation any way you slice it. If that gives out, there's tons of room. Some initial targets, I just wanted to highlight 5282 is just a soft target to the upside, but you're essentially looking for a run on that 618 extension, one 618 extension into 5370. So you have breakout targets that are pretty clear. The risk remains sub 5220. Key support in your term, look at 5020, which is the 2016 open. And again, bullish invalidation, meaning what would put me straight bearish would be a break below that 618. And again, that would be the opening range break for the week. Okay, so right now the focus is sort of a play like this, maybe down into here, but initially into here, and then maybe another move into the upper parallel. Eventually, we are looking for the breakout, I think, uh, but the risk remains that if this formation breaks to the downside, you see it or it triggers a correction first, maybe towards the lower parallel here or former parallel resistance, and then a move higher. Um, coincides very well with what I'm looking at in dollar CAD. I think dollar CAD could pop higher, but I do want to short it. Um, and Euro, you know, Euro is constructive broadly speaking, that's no question, but I also think that's at risk for near-term exhaustion as well. So that would give us a little bit more of an immediate risk for a downside move in EuroCAD before we start to rally. Questions on EuroCAD. Number four, got to pick up the pace here a little bit. Euro Aussie is number five. Here's what Euro Aus looks like on the daily chart. Uh, that obviously is breaking through. Uh, the major key resistance range that we talked about was 5046 into 51. Major, major region of resistance. You caught the highs here, a 50% retracement, a 1618 extension off the low, you name it, and it was there. Slope resistance, the whole nine yards. So as we were heading into this yesterday, again, not a trade that you could have really picked at from a scalping standpoint, guys, but I did want it to be, you just alert you to the fact that it was looking to break. Um, if you had the kahunas <laughs> to try to jump in the trade, um, you know, we just missed target. The first target was 52.49. The high so far um, is 52.27. So we got pretty close, but not quite there. Uh, momentum is an overbought on the daily chart. Still has room to the upside for Euro out, for Euro Oz, so uh, be careful. I wouldn't want to chase this on the long side, guys. The intraday chart doesn't have these levels on it, so... I didn't want to present it last night, but I just wanted to show you this basic opening range break to the upside does give us an upside bias heading to the end of the week. Um, unlike Euro um, uh, or Euro CAD, which saw that break of the weekly opening range and then held resistance, Euro Aussie saw a, week, a break of the weekly opening range, excuse me, and broke resistance. 
So it's a little bit different of a picture. The one thing I want to say is a lot of times when you see these divergences, meaning EuroCAD will break into a new high and Euro Oz won't, typically these happen at turns and they're typically indications that one of the trades are lying. Either, either EuroCAD is going to play catch up and break out just like Euro Oz or the Euro Oz breakout is going to be a head fake and it's going to reverse lower. So this is a time where you want to, again, it's, it's another reason to be cautious heading into the weekly close. We're just opening up a new week, there's event risk on tap, and you're getting these weird divergences at major key thresholds, resistance for Euro CAD and a break of resistance for Euro Oz. So the long and short of it is this, as long as you maintain support above 51, it's constructive, top side targets 5250 and 5343, that upper parallel, maybe choke that down to 5320, uh, you know, whatever, as long as you're looking at this basic trend line off the 2015 highs. So levels are pretty clear. Levels are pretty clear. Today's close will be paramount because yesterday we closed right at resistance. So we didn't quite get the close above resistance. Uh, today will be sort of the admission of conviction, let's call it, whether it's going to be a head fake uh, or whether it's going to be a continuation up into that 52.50, 53.40. Uh, support bar uh, resistance barriers. Okay, questions on Euro Oz as a mouthful. Uh, here's what the near term chart looks like. Again, I don't want to really stress it, but just to show you the slope that we're breaking, guys, if, if this is legit and you hear me say it all the time, you know, a break of, um, I shouldn't have done that, keep that there. Uh, a break of upslope resistance should typically see some pretty radical acceleration. You know, I don't want to see this uh, break and then maybe, you know, this, this kind of action. I want to see a break of an upslope really charge a, a, a major rally. So a break of resistance, maybe pull back into support into the U.S. Open, but I do want to see this continue to gather pace while above 51. With Aussie dollar at support, this is the reason why I'm concerned. Because if Aussie bounces, Euro is still holding resistance, you could get the pullback here. So it's a tough call on Euro Aus, but above 51, I would say if we close above that, you got to respect the upside. Okay, let's jump into Euro dollar. Since we're talking about the Euro, uh, number six, Euro Aus is already at the weekly R2 right here, Sandy. So another reason why you might want to be cautious about uh, the upside. Here's the thing. Actually, that actually makes sense. So if it broke to the upside here and it paused at the R2, that would be a good area for it to pause. Sandy's already out in the long. I love the way you're trading this. Um, that would have been my first target. So now you want to kind of let this thing reset. Um, if that is, well, it is the, the weekly R2, right, pivot, it would be a good area of, of why it would want to pause there, maybe pull back, but that would give even more conviction on a breach higher to look at those targets again at 52.50 and 53.40. Euro dollar looks like this. So, okay. Um, what can we say about this? There's really nothing to add to yesterday, guys. The daily chart is pretty self-explanatory. There's nothing to change here. Your major key support still remains right around 111.29. Top side targets, which we haven't been able to stretch into, still 112.85 and 113.43. Um, on the daily chart. So again, take a snapshot of this if you need to. It's still on the um, update for the 30th. So no change to any of these levels. Same daily chart. Okay, we're still holding this same range. Here's what the 240-minute uh, looked like earlier in the week. You saw a break of this near-term descending channel go right back into the high-day close, which held as resistance and then we moved right off. So we're still within the confines of that key range. Okay, here's what the intraday chart looked like on the 120 earlier in the week, and here's what we look like now. Okay, so again, kind of held that weekly opening range, pop and broke yesterday. We talked about this during the webinar. It came right into the high day close. We literally got a perfect tag of the high day close right up here at 112.55 and then pulled right back off. We're now testing former channel resistance as support. And 
the opening range high for the week as support. So what does that mean for Euro dollar? Well, you have a pretty well-defined range. Again, the top side bias is at risk below this region, just as we noted here last month as we were heading into 52, excuse me, uh, 1255, uh, 1285, we, we noted that the downside risk exists. Again, same thing, same thing. Ultimately, it's a constructive trade. I can't really stress that enough. Euro has made some pretty big strides, and certainly the breakaway gap and everything that we've cleared does suggest you want to be, you know, broadly long-term constructive, okay? Uh, but at this point, at this juncture, right, divergence, again, don't trust me. Look at the chart. Whoop, wrong chart. Price action making a higher high, the oscillator making a lower high, okay? So the onset doesn't mean anything in time. It could show you another three divergent signals before it breaks, but it's important to recognize when it's there. Um, and after this kind of run, wouldn't be surprised if we see some more chop sideways action. You gotta keep, stay constructive above 112.85. Uh, you know, the, the barrier of entry, let's call it, or, or the major sort of ceiling you need to clear is still that 1285 level, in my humble opinion, to really get some accelerated gains here for the euro. Questions on euro dollar? D. Uh, or who was it that was asking you about whether I, I covered euro yet? Yeah, it was you. Any questions? So levels of which to buy, she's thinking. Uh, so interesting areas of which I would look for support. Guys, we, before I give out carte blanche answers like that, I always want to caveat it by saying we're looking near term, right? When I give you entries that I'm possibly looking for, I'm not talking about you know moves towards 114 or 115. I'm talking about real near term. Uh, but for me, initial support, obviously you're looking at it right here. Uh, you know, If you dig down into a five minute chart just to see what's going on in near term price, you can see that we rebounded or pivoted right off that former channel. So on a real near-term approach, approach, you just came off support. Um, and there's a little bit of a bounce here. But some more levels of interest would be the weekly open. That'd be 1160. Um, or even if you get down into 112.28, again, that's sort of former trend line resistance turned support would be support again, hopefully on the way down. Um, but this is our near-term bullish invalidation. So D, if we break below this, I wouldn't be looking to buy anymore. I'd be looking for a larger correction to the downside. Uh, but as it stands right now, you know, I would be looking lower. I wouldn't be looking to buy necessarily. I do think it's at risk for a little bit of a pullback here. Ultimately, either, either a breach and test of 1285 or a dip down into the weekly open would be areas of which I'd be looking to buy. You got it. More than welcome. Okay, I got to run here. So let's, uh, Sterling Oz. Here's the next one. Sterling Oz looks like this. Earlier in the week, Sterling Oz was giving us a nice ride, coming into major support at 171.19. Didn't quite get that low. Uh, we turned just ahead of that region. Um, we talked about that yesterday. So there's not really much to update. Pound Oz, pound Oz, pound Oz. Here we go. So, again, let me just take this to 120. We came right into that. That was actually the stretch low, okay, held. Near-term resistance, we talked about 172.57. We plowed right through that yesterday on that rally into the U.S. Open. Took out the weekly opening range high. Took out the monthly opens. Targets at 73.64. The next upside target is 74.56. We turn just ahead of it. Um, I do think you get that stretch, possibly on Aussie weakness. Um, but again, divergence is not quite divergence, let's say, but the momentum signature is getting a little tired here, holding below 70. And, you know, you have that retracement just higher at 74.56. So if you're not already long, um, you don't really have anywhere to put your stops. If you're holding long exposure, I do think you possibly get that stretch higher uh, near that 618 key retracement of just this range would be a nice area of which you'd start to find some resistance. Um, that being said, you know, pretty nice rebound off of the median line. 
Remember this slope? Same slope we've been following. Look at that. Resistance, 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 break, acceleration. Nice support bounce. So that would suggest that you would look for a rebound into the upper parallel. And the next parallel to the upside that has given us some really nice pivots, resistance, resistance, break, support, acceleration, acceleration, support would be just higher. And that's why 74.56 for me is a decent target if you're holding longs. Um, the stretch would take you maybe into the 75 handle to touch that median line. But pretty clean formation in pound Oz. Any questions on pound Oz? All right, that is number seven. Number eight, uh, not much time going to spend on this. Kiwi Yen, same thing. You're holding at range. Watch for the range to break. Um, it's the same range that we highlighted earlier in the week. It's just been ridiculous. We've been following this since Sunday, uh, or since Monday, rather. We came right into resistance, tagged right into support, came back into resistance, and we're just holding this range. So another trade I think will be a beautiful setup heading into the monthly opens here, or monthly open, let's call it. Um, as you look for a break of this you know, multi-week range at this point, um, and it's taking place just above the 200-day moving average, and just below a Fibonacci confluence with some swing lows, that's 78, 75, the 78, 90 region. So very tidy to open up the week, momentum flatlining. These are the boring trades that turn exciting real quick. So there's nothing to do necessarily right now except play that tight range. But once we do clear it, I think we'll get a little bit more definitive price action. I do think the risk is for uh, sort of another pop fake out higher than a move lower is kind of what I'm envisioning here in Kiwi Yen just based on the relative performance that we're seeing in both Kiwi and Yen. Um, but that being said, you know, look for a break of this range near term. That's kind of the focus heading into the June open. 78.90 to 77.90. Kiwi Yen, going once, going twice. Let's jump into Kiwi Dollar. That'll be number nine. Um, I have to leave room for Brent here because I promised I'd do it for Karthik. So let me... Uh, really run through this really quick. Guys, 200-day uh, moving average, you saw a spike through it on the pullback. You're coming into some near-term support near 70.50 right here. We highlighted this yesterday in the webinar. I haven't touched this chart. This is the same exact chart we looked at yesterday in the webinar. You can see we were talking about that upper parallel, how I couldn't get excited even though the breakout looked like it was legit. Near-term slope off the lows still governed the highs here yesterday. And the pullback, taking us back below the 50 line, does have me thinking um, you know, more of an exhaustion trade. Here's momentum breaking back below, uh, not quite below 40 yet, but it looks like it's testing 40. Remember, in upslope trends, you want RSI to hold 40 support. You see where my mouse is, guys? Look to the left. Since the low we made on the 10th, momentum has held 40 as support. In downslopes, typically you want RSI to hold 60 as resistance, right? So if we break below 40 here, and if we start to break back below the weekly open, which we're doing, if this trend line gives out, that would give a suggestion that both momentum is turning over and price. And if we clear the weekly opening range lows near 70.36, which coincides, or let's, yeah, which coincides pretty decent with that median line, you would look for a way larger correction in Kiwi dollar. Um, it's a whole lot of dollar strength though, so I don't know if we'll get it, but. Long story short, look for support into the weekly opening range lows here for Kiwi Dollar. Okay, still looking immediately lower, heading to the U.S. trade session. Uh, if this is a legit breakout, like I said, check it as support. That should hold. If it breaks back below, it could be sort of the same deal that we were doing with Aussie Dollar. And again, that divergence where Aussie didn't make that break of resistance and Kiwi did a tell, right? Uh, and that brings us to Aussie Kiwi, number 10, uh, which is an interesting trade because it's kind of, what's the word? It's kind of like just a slow burner, I guess, as dollar yen has been. Um, really clean as far as coming into our uh, key levels that we've been watching. Here's what Aussie Kiwi looked like uh, earlier in the week. Right here, there we go, on the 29th. And here's what Aussie Kiwi looked like. 
Okay, we were just sitting below resistance at 105.77 was our bearish invalidation level. We were looking for that break below 104.90 to target 104.35 and the 104 handle. So basically, we've exhausted all those uh, initial downside targets. The 104 handle is going to be the next downside break to look for. Um, if we do make this break of 103, 104.35, but I do want to highlight that this is pretty big because we have slope there as well, and that's defined by the daily chart. That's this. And this, my friends, is the parallel of the multi-year slope of influence extending off the 2014 lows. Literally. It's the same parallel of this, same parallel of this, same parallel, and that converges on some swing highs. So we're coming into that region right now. Um, the lower parallel of this formation, which we obviously tagged the upper parallel here, would take you down to that next target, which is basically at the 104 handle. Questions? Going once, going twice on Aussie Kiwi. Okay, moving right along. Um, gold, silver, and crude, and then we'll jump into Brent. Uh, real quick coverage of this, gold still holding resistance. I know that everyone um, you know, thought that this was, uh, yesterday was going to be the ultimate breakout. Um, you know, it didn't materialize. You saw a quick breach of the weekly opening range, but it quickly, quickly recovered. So uh, I'm still not bullish on, on the gold trade here. Broadly speaking, yes. At these levels, no. Okay, same thing I started saying at the, end, at the start of the week, guys. Um, I'm just looking for the correction lower to get long. I'm not saying that this is, you know, a bearish trade per se, but I do think that the immediate risk still remains lower. Uh, inevitably, you want to buy this, but, you know, you got structural resistance. The 618, while we did sail through it, has continued to be sort of a, a magnet. Um, you know, the breach above snaps right back to, the break below snaps right back to. So, you know, 1264 is still sort of the median line or the median range, rather, let's call it, for the week. Um, yeah, you know, I don't know how to trade this from here, guys. Even on a near-term basis, I would say wait for the pullback to get long. Now, once we break the weekly opening range low, tack on a quick retracement, and that's sort of your first indication of what I would look for. So just as a drill, and again, I don't really have time to go through this today, but um, if this it does break the weekly opening range lows, and then we would just look for some structure to the decline. Now this is very preliminary, okay? And I don't wanna get everyone excited yet, but such a, such a move would, would, if this is the high, right? This is the weekly opening range low. Once you break below the median line, look where your first target shows up, 1250. 1251, 38.2 retracement, converges on the 50 line, and that's just your first target. So, you know, the risk is there. I don't want to necessarily advocate it here because a stop against 1274 is still, you know, more than $10 away from where current price is trading. Um, but that's sort of what I'm envisioning before the ultimate breakout. This is huge, guys. This region is huge. You know, this is trend line resistance dating back to the all-time record highs. So... Yeah, I think you get a little kickback. Momentum, look at that. Holding 60 is resistance. We just talked about this. In downtrends, you don't want to see 60 hold as resistance. Right? Um, so, a little concerning. A little concerning that you may see a little near-term weakness here in crude. Take a look at silver. Very similar. Right? Silver is coming into support, though. That's the one thing I do want to highlight. So, this has already made a break of its weekly opening range today. With this decline... Highlighting this key area that we noted yesterday in the webinar, that's 17, just into the 17 handle. You have basic trend line support, extending off the lows, channel support. And then again, uh, this is a 38.2 retracement. I'd rather work with this now that we've broken the weekly opening range. Uh, take this retracement. And that highlights the 38.2, just lower at 16.91. So let me adjust this just a tad. Get rid of that 236. Here's some amended levels I'd be working with uh, for the silver trade. 
Okay, lower your bearish uh, invalidation level to here. Still going to be 1741 in my opinion. Looking for support down to 1691 uh, for silver. So Sarub, that would be the first area I'd look for support. I don't necessarily know. I'd need to have a buy signal here on my near-term chart for me to get uh, on a rebound. But this is the first area I'd start to look for structural support. If that breaks, that's your bullish invalidation level for the upslope. Okay, especially because you have these swing highs and swing lows. Silver is a is a is a very loose trade, so don't get too too sticky with it. Uh, but for me, this is sort of the range of near-term bullish invalidation. Make sense? Gold, silver, that's 12, and crude, and then we'll jump into Brent. Cheers, Sarup. Um, here's crude. Boom. So pretty ugly, I think, on the near term. I guess I, rather on the daily, let's call it, pretty ugly. Um, the only thing I'm looking at really is this uh, median line formation. Uh, the slope has kind of lost efficacy at this point. I'm looking to see if this correction is sort of wrapping up or if you still have another stretch to go. Ideally, I was looking for the drop into 4688, 47. I know I've told you guys that here in the room, this region. Uh, because of the confluence of slope, the median line, a key 618 retracement, really nice pivots in price, right? One, two, three lows, break, saw acceleration, resistance, a breach, saw acceleration, such a sweet spot. But now that we've moved forward in time, the slope starts to drift below and we start to get a little bit further away from this. So look, the reaction that we got off of um, that 50% retracement really puts into focus for me 49.22, uh, 49.17, excuse me, as resistance, really nice pivot in price and the confluence of all these MLs and uh, 46.80, 47. It's, this is the range I'm focused on. Uh, with this being my near-term bearish invalidation. So if we pop back through 49.17 on the upside, I don't want anything to do with trying to necessarily short this. I think you chop sideways, you go back into 50, 50, 50 maybe. Um, you know, it's the start of the month, guys. It's going to set its monthly opening range. And again, you're, you're heading into a event risk uh, Friday. So don't take any stern positions on this. But I would say that, you know, put a gunshot to my head, I still would say that you're at risk sub 50 for a move lower. Again, 47, 46, 88, sort of the sweet spot. Um, I would like to see gold prices start to find a little bit more support on a drop lower. Okay, uh, that is crude prices, and I need, literally need to run. So let me uh, just take a look at Brent here. Um, what is it on stock? Twits UK oil. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going on the fly here for you, Karthik. Let's just see what the market provides. Okay, let's just dress this with some basic trend lines. Let's see what kind of slope we've been working with. Okay, bear with me. This is going to get messy. I'm just, again, just checking things out here. Oh, that works out. Okay. Wow, and it made a perfect 100% extension. Okay, so here, here's what I would say. It made a 100% extension off the, off the high. So one, two, boom, 
got you 100% right there. Slipped right below, then popped right through. That's 48. So Brent popped back higher into the 100-day moving average. That held. It's the same trade as the UK oil, as the uh, as crude, in that you're looking to gauge whether the correction has further down to go or not. Uh, I would be looking at this near-term retracement, obviously. I'd expect to see that we came pretty darn close to that 50% retracement right there. Same thing as we did in crude. It's basically the same trade here, Karthik. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. I would say that you would look for support a little bit lower down into 49.70, maybe not 49 here. Uh, 49.70, that trend line support comes in just lower at 49.30. Areas of interest for a little bit more meaningful near-term support, possible long entry on a rebound. Um, but those are the levels I'd be looking at near-term, uh, Karthik, for, uh, for, for Brent. It's not the cleanest setup. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, a lot of people will call this a head and shoulders formation. So if that is a head and shoulders formation, the measured move, you know, of the range on just a conservative approach would be down here at 46.89. Okay, if we were to interpret this as sort of the neckline of the move, right, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, break, um, you know, that's kind of an aggressive, actually, measurement, so if we were to do something like this, that would choke it up even more, 47.67 to 48. So, look, I mean, the, the possibility is there. Um, I don't think it's the cleanest as far as structural. Uh, on the real near term, I would have loved to have structure to the decline. That's my problem with it. If we had a channel or a pitchfork or something that was giving us guidance for the downside, I'd have much more viability on what I could use as my bearish invalidation level. But until I do, um, you know, I'd be looking for a drop into this key region of support and look for a reaction there. All right. Guys, I got to wrap it up here. Uh, I got to head out. So thank you for everyone who attended uh, this week's webinars. Again, we'll be on um, on Monday on Daily FX for the free webinar, obviously, public. Uh, and then back here on SB Trade Desk Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. Keep in mind, we have the RBA next week. We have the ECB next week. There's <laughs> a lot of stuff on tap as we just open up June trade. So obviously, guys, there is a lot uh, of awesome stuff coming up next week. I will be doing a live webinar tomorrow, roundtable discussion just on the fundies and the aftermath of NFPs uh, on daily effects with uh, some of my colleagues there. So I encourage you guys, if you have time to uh, listen in on that, it's always just a kind of casual trader talk uh, type of scenario. But that being said, have a great weekend, guys, and I will see you all next week. Cheers. Good luck tomorrow on NFPs.